It usually starts quietly, dot. You've been taking your blood pressure meds every morning. The same little white pill your doctor said would keep your heart safe. You feel fine. No headaches, no dizziness, numbers look great. But then something else changes. You notice you're not quite the same with your partner. What used to be easy, natural, now takes effort. Or maybe it just doesn't happen at all. You start wondering, is it me? Is it age? Stress? Or could it be the medication? Amlodipine, one of the most prescribed blood pressure drugs in the United States, helps millions of men control hypertension and prevent heart attacks. But lately, a quiet question has been spreading through online forums, doctor's offices, and late-night searches. Does amlodipine affect sexual performance or cause erectile dysfunction? The answer isn't as simple as yes or no. Some studies say it's neutral. Others suggest it might interfere, just enough to matter for some men. The truth lives somewhere in between, inside your blood vessels, your hormones, and your heart's own pressure balance. In this video, we'll dive into the real science behind how amlodipine works, and whether it might be affecting male sexual health in ways doctors rarely talk about. You'll learn what research actually says, why it's so confusing, and what you can do if you've noticed changes since starting the drug. Because protecting your heart shouldn't come at the cost of your confidence. Before we can talk about sexual health, we need to understand what amlodipine actually does inside your body. Amlodipine belongs to a class of drugs called calcium channel blockers, specifically the dihydropyridine type. Its main job is to relax and widen blood vessels, particularly the arteries, so your heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump blood. By blocking calcium from entering the muscle cells of the arteries, it prevents those vessels from tightening and narrows resistance across the entire circulatory system. That's why doctors love it. It's effective, predictable, and compared to older blood pressure drugs like beta blockers or diuretics, it usually causes fewer sexual side effects. But here's where it gets tricky. Erections rely on the very same system, blood flow. To achieve one, arteries leading into the penis need to dilate rapidly, filling spongy tissue with blood and trapping it there. Anything that changes that balance, too little blood flow, too much vasodilation, or lowered systemic pressure, can affect performance. Most studies suggest amlodipine doesn't directly damage this mechanism. In fact, because it improves overall circulation, some theorize it could even help in theory. But in real life, things aren't so simple. If your blood pressure drops too far, or if you already have vascular problems from diabetes, smoking, or atherosclerosis, the balance can tip the other way, and the result can feel like a slow, subtle change in sexual function. Not immediate, not catastrophic, but noticeable. So, while amlodipine's main mission is protecting your heart and arteries, it operates in the same system that supports your sexual health. And when one part of that system shifts, the other can quietly follow. Next, we will find the connection between blood pressure and sexual performance. Here's a question that surprises many men. What if it's not just the medication, but the hypertension itself? That's affecting your performance. Erectile function is, at its core, a vascular event. It depends on smooth, responsive arteries, healthy endothelium, the lining of your blood vessels, and sufficient blood pressure to create and maintain rigidity. When hypertension enters the picture, that system takes a beating long before any pill does. Over time, high blood pressure damages the endothelium, the delicate layer that releases nitric oxide, a chemical that tells your arteries to relax. Without enough nitric oxide, the arteries in the penis can't dilate properly. The result? Reduced blood inflow, weaker erections, and a longer recovery time between them. Now, enter amlodipine. It helps by easing that vascular pressure, lowering the strain on your heart and arteries. But if your blood pressure drops too much, it may inadvertently reduce penile perfusion pressure, the difference between the inflow and outflow that allows blood to stay trapped in the erectile tissue. Think of it like a garden hose. If the pressure is too low, the flow weakens, even if the pipe is clear. This is why some men on strong antihypertensives notice a subtle loss of firmness or difficulty maintaining erections. It's not always because of hormonal changes. It's simply physics and vascular dynamics. The irony is striking. 
The very drug protecting you from a heart attack or stroke could, in some men, interfere with sexual performance, not through direct harm, but through fine-tuned changes in blood flow. But here's the key. Not everyone experiences this. For most men, amlodipine is either neutral or mildly affecting at best. The true problem lies in how multiple risk factors overlap, age, diabetes, vascular disease, or the combination of several blood pressure medications. So, when a man on amlodipine experiences changes in sexual health, the real question isn't just is it the drug, it's what else is happening in my arteries. Let's cut through the confusion and look at what the science actually says. Because while the internet is filled with warnings, most of what we know about amlodipine and sexual function comes from a small handful of clinical trials and observational reports, and their message is nuanced. In one of the most frequently cited reviews published in Lippincott's Pharmacology Journal, researchers compared various blood pressure drugs for their impact on male sexual health. The result? Calcium channel blockers like amlodipine were classified as neutral to mildly negative. In other words, they weren't saints, but they weren't the villains either. Beta blockers and diuretics carried a much higher risk of erectile dysfunction, while amlodipine sat comfortably in the middle. Another large-scale pharmacovigilance study, which analyzed thousands of reports from real-world patients, did find that amlodipine showed a signal for erectile dysfunction, meaning the reports occurred more frequently than expected. But even that signal didn't prove causation. Many of those men also had diabetes, heart disease, or were taking multiple antihypertensive drugs, all of which independently increased the risk of ED. A small clinical study went further measuring hormone levels. It found that some men taking amlodipine had slightly lower testosterone and reduced libido, though the effect size was modest and the sample was small. Researchers couldn't say whether it was the medication, the disease, or both. Animal studies add another layer. When scientists compared losartan, an ARB, and amlodipine in rats with induced vascular stress, they noticed that losartan preserved penile structure, while amlodipine did not. But this doesn't necessarily mean amlodipine causes damage. Rather, it doesn't seem to protect the erectile tissue the way some ARBs might. Put simply, the clinical picture looks like this. Asterisk amlodipine isn't the main culprit behind sexual dysfunction. Asterisk, but in some men, especially older adults or those with multiple risk factors, it may contribute to reduced performance indirectly. The good news is that these changes are often reversible. Many patients report improvement after switching drug classes or adjusting the dose under medical supervision. The takeaway? Context matters. It's not just about the pill, it's about the body it's working within. If amlodipine doesn't affect everyone the same way, the natural question is, why do some men experience changes in sexual performance while others feel no difference at all? The answer lies in a mix of biology, comorbidities, and lifestyle factors, the kind of subtle interplay that medicine can't always capture in a clinical trial. Start with age. As men grow older, their vascular flexibility decreases. The same stiffening that affects coronary arteries also affects penile arteries, which are even smaller and more sensitive to blood flow changes. Amlodipine's vasodilation may lower systemic pressure slightly more than what's ideal for optimal perfusion in these already narrowed vessels. For some older adults, that can mean a subtle dip in erectile quality, even without full-blown dysfunction. Then there's vascular disease and metabolic health. Men with diabetes, hypertension, or atherosclerosis already struggle with endothelial dysfunction. The inner lining of blood vessels doesn't release nitric oxide efficiently. Add a medication that further alters hemodynamics, and it might tip the scale just enough to make erections less reliable. Polypharmacy plays a role too. Many men taking amlodipine are also on beta blockers, diuretics, or statins, drugs that can compound the risk of sexual side effects. So even if amlodipine itself is neutral, the combined effect of multiple medications may create the perception that it's the problem. There's also dose dependency. Higher doses, 10 mg daily for instance, exert stronger vasodilatory effects and may more easily lower perfusion pressure. 
Men on the lower 2.5 to 5 milligrams range tend to report fewer issues, suggesting that sensitivity to blood pressure changes can vary from person to person. And finally, psychological factors matter more than most realize. When men expect a medication to affect their sexual function, that anxiety alone can contribute to performance changes. Cardiologists often call this the nocebo effect, the mirror image of placebo, and it's surprisingly powerful. So while amlodipine may be one piece of the puzzle, it's rarely the whole picture. Most cases of erectile changes on amlodipine are the result of multiple small pressures converging vascular, metabolic, emotional rather than a single drug's direct action. <laughs> Managing the problem, what you can actually do. If you're watching this and starting to worry, take a deep breath. This next part is where things get practical. Because the truth is, if you are taking amlodipine and noticing changes in your sexual performance, it doesn't automatically mean you need to stop your medication. What you need is a plan, one that addresses the real causes while keeping your heart protected. The first step is open communication. Many men hesitate to tell their doctors about sexual side effects, often out of embarrassment or fear of being dismissed. But your physician can't help with a problem they don't know exists. A good cardiologist or primary care provider will take your concerns seriously because sexual health is an important marker of overall vascular health. It's not just about intimacy, it's about circulation, oxygen delivery, and your long-term well-being. Next comes evaluating the cause. Sometimes what looks like a medication issue is actually an early sign of vascular disease or uncontrolled hypertension. Your doctor may check your blood sugar, lipid profile, and testosterone levels to get a fuller picture. It's possible that the problem stems not from the drug, but from the underlying condition the drug is treating. If amlodipine is contributing, the solution isn't always to quit cold turkey. Your doctor might adjust the dose. Even a small reduction can make a difference in how you feel. Alternatively, they may consider switching you to another class of blood pressure medicine, such as an angiotensin receptor blocker, ERB, or ACE inhibitor, both of which tend to have a more favorable sexual side effect profile. There are also safe add-on options. For example, medications like sildenafil Viagra or Tadalafil Cialis can be used alongside amlodipine in most patients, as long as blood pressure remains stable. These PDE5 inhibitors work by enhancing nitric oxide signaling and improving blood flow to the penile tissue, essentially compensating for any hemodynamic imbalance. Beyond medications, lifestyle changes can make a huge impact. Regular exercise improves endothelial function. Losing even 5 to 10 pounds can raise testosterone levels and improve circulation. Reducing alcohol, quitting smoking, and managing stress all help reverse the vascular and psychological components of erectile dysfunction. Finally, don't make changes on your own. Abruptly stopping amlodipine can cause rebound hypertension or chest pain, potentially dangerous in people with heart disease. Always discuss any adjustments with your health care provider. The goal isn't to choose between your heart and your sexual health. The goal is to protect both, and with proper management, that's not only possible, it's common. The final summary and reassurance. So, does amlodipine affect male sexual health and erectile function? The most accurate answer based on current medical evidence is possibly, but mildly, and not for everyone. Let's recap what science actually says. Amlodipine as a calcium channel blocker works mainly on your blood vessels. It relaxes and widens them to lower blood pressure. For most men, that effect doesn't directly harm sexual performance. In fact, by improving circulation and reducing strain on the arteries, it can even help long-term vascular health, which is essential for maintaining erections. However, in some individuals, particularly older men, those with diabetes, vascular disease, or very low blood pressure, that same vasodilating effect may slightly lower penile perfusion pressure, add in hormonal shifts, stress, or pre-existing vascular issues, and the result can be a subtle decline in erectile function or libido. But here's the key. These effects are not permanent. In most reported cases, sexual function improves after adjusting the dose, switching medications, or treating underlying issues like hypertension or diabetes. 
It's not a dead end. It's a signal from your body that something might be out of balance. And it's worth remembering that hypertension itself is one of the strongest predictors of erectile dysfunction. So, while it's easy to blame the pill, sometimes the real culprit is the disease it's fighting. Managing your blood pressure effectively is one of the best things you can do for your sexual health in the long run. If you're on amlodipine and worried, talk to your doctor. Bring it up without hesitation. Ask whether a medication review, hormone check, or PDE5 inhibitor might be appropriate for you. Most importantly, don't stop taking your medication suddenly. Your heart depends on stable blood pressure control, and there are safer ways to make adjustments. Ultimately, sexual health is vascular health. The same lifestyle choices that protect your heart, exercise, balanced nutrition, adequate sleep, quitting smoking, also protect your erections. It's all connected. If this video helped you understand the link between amlodipine and male sexual function, consider giving it a like, sharing it with someone who might benefit, and subscribing for more medically accurate, evidence-based health videos designed to empower you with knowledge. Your health journey doesn't stop with a prescription. It starts with awareness, and that's exactly where you are right now.